we rolling? Let's do this. What's going on everyone? I know usually Ashley is the one that comes with the videos and the challenges and things like that, but uh, after the week I've had, it's just been a lot on my mind and just been processing. And I told Ashley the other day, I said, I just need to make a video. Uh, not for clicks, not for likes, not for views, not to go viral. Just to, to get stuff off my heart, just to get things out of my mind and out of my body. Uh, you know, I don't know what I'll do with this, but I just needed to speak. Uh, my name's Daryl Ramsey. For those that know me, if they're family or good friends, you know me as Skip. Uh, you might know me from Pleasantville. You might know me from Montclair State University. You might know me from North Carolina A&T or Greensboro. Uh, from my time down there, you might know me from Atlantic City or from the church circuit in Southern Jersey. Or you might know me here in LA um, in the education system. I am a father. I am a husband. I am a son. I am a brother. Uh, I'm a man of God. I'm an example. Hey, I'm an educator. I'm a school principal. But I'm also an African American in America. And you know what? This week has been tough. And there's no words. I'm not even going to pretend like I have it all together. I'm not going to pretend like I know it all. I'm going to just speak freely. No script. No, no notes. Just from my heart, off the top of my dome. I, Last week, I could not imagine the week I would have had. I was watching, finally, um, when they see us. You know, it was a while trying to wait for my wife to be really prepared to watch it, and she still wasn't. So I decided to take it on by myself, and I watched that. And then the next day, we have the, the death and murder of Mr. Floyd in this country. And then just the ripple effects of the news and the social media and people speaking up and then people making excuses and it just it weighs on your mind it weighs on your heart and I can't tell you how many times this week people said hey are you alright and I'm thinking it's because I physically look tired because I have a newborn and a two-year-old or about to be two-year-old maybe it was because it's the end of the school year it's a lot of stress and having meetings and trying to meet deadlines and trying to close the school year out after it being closed for almost three months and then it hit me that what they were seeing was the weight that I had been carrying. Sure, I put on the face and I put on the mask and say, hey, how you doing? I'm Mr. Ramsey, I'm here leading the school forward. I'm a leader inspiring hope, trying to keep the ship steady, trying to make sure that we're all taken care of. And I had to realize that I was hurting. And yet God saw my heart. I knew he had me like he always does. I knew my wife, she has me like she always does. In my inner circle, I know they had me, but it was like through the cracks, the pain was starting to seep out. Through the chinks in the armor, the weight that I was carrying was starting to show, and it was like, I, I couldn't hide it. I thought, I, I wasn't even trying to hide it, but I was, I was just trying to do one day after another, one step in front of the other, just trying to, to keep pace, and I was like, I need to take a moment. I need to take a couple of moments to breathe when I know others are no longer able to breathe. I need to take a moment to cherish the life I have and the position I'm at and realize it's been this long journey that's brought me here and not to forget the lessons of my youth, not to forget the lessons of my path, my past. You know, I remember nine or 10 years old in the mall with my mom and she was inside the store and I'm in the storefront and security comes and says, hey, where have you been? You know, it's like, I was like, I'm with my mom. I, they were like, you, something's been stolen and you kind of fit the description. And my mom came and said, he's been with me. It, it's not him. And I remember like for the first time, it was like, whoa, I can't be looked at as the same in the store. I was a young kid, I didn't know, I was ignorant. And I'm not saying these stories that make it seem like I've been through the rest. I, I think I've had it pretty good. Uh, but these things did start to form because I realized I had to be a little different. I could have the same grades, I could talk the same language, I could even move the same, participate in the same groups and organizations, but I still had to another level that I had to attain just to be at the table. I remember an internship at a hospital and I had braids, I was in college and I remember they looked at me like I was funny. So I decided to finally cut my hair and the next week, 
Friday I cut my hair, Monday I come clean shaven and they were like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm the same guy that was here last week. But it was a new form of acceptance because I look different. Was I fitting their expectations before? Was I now? Who knows? I remember I tried to fit in and it never seemed like I did. And it was like, I'm always trying to get a seat at the table. I remember in Atlantic City being a community worker, serving my church, serving a youth, just trying to be an example because I knew they needed it. And driving around to the hood, to the village, you know, to the areas that aren't so, I'll say, trafficked by the people that like to visit for the beaches, the casino, and the shopping. Because I was working with some young men that lived there, and I remember I was driving them home, came up to a light, stopped, because it was red. I pulled forward, I stopped a second time, because it was red. I looked and saw the cop on the left. I made sure I stopped fully, waited, before I turned on red, because it was clear. I drive four blocks, watched the rear view the whole time, because I just had a feeling cops were maybe watching. I got. Me, a black man in the front, one in the passenger, one in the back, in a bad neighborhood. While I was in the neighborhood, I was taking them home, but I knew it could look suspicious if I wasn't paying attention. And sure enough, four blocks later, the cop rolls up on me. I wasn't speeding. I didn't run a red. I didn't break any laws. He said, do you know why I'm pulling you over? I said, no, sir. I said, could you please tell me? He said, uh, back at the light. You, you ran the light? And I said, no, sir, I didn't. I said, actually, I stopped two times. I said, I saw you at the light before I turned, and I made sure that I followed the rules, and then I turned. I said, here's my license. Here's my registration. Here's my insurance card. I'm just taking these two young men home that I mentor. They live around the corner. He said, I'll be right back. He goes back to his car. He comes back. Clean record. He said, Mr. Ramsey, here you go. He said... Have a nice day. Make sure you get home safely. And, and there's there been so many times that it was like I'm stopped and I'm like, I have to play the role that be above reproach, be calm, be collective, be cool. But you know what, my heart hurt because no matter how many times I had to play that role, other people have also played that role and it didn't end the same. So we're at this crossroads. Us as a country, us as a people, I speak to the people of faith, us as a church, we're at a crossroads. And we have to step up to the plate and say, we got to start living differently. We got to let our voices be heard. And I'm not just talking about on social media and sharing a post. That could, That's great. I'm not against that. But just quickly hitting the repost is, should be the end of your voice. Should you make a video? to voice your concerns? Should you protest peacefully as much as possible? Should you write your congressman, your governor? Should you vote? Let your voice be heard this year. You know, there's going to come a time where we all have circles of influences and it may be on the front line, it may be in the middle of the field, it may be in the back, it may be on the home front, wherever it is, can you let your voice rise and be heard for justice, for equality? for lives to continue to matter. We don't need any more bloodshed. We don't need any more blood crying out from the streets for justice. We need change. And it starts inside of each one of us. I'm challenging myself. Yeah, I lead a school. I'm in the suburbs. And you know what? I, I had to watch as someone that I know, minority man, doing his job locking up a building, and the cops detaining him in the back seat of his car. He had his badge, he had the keys. He said, here's my supervisor's number, and they detained him just because he fit a description of somebody that might have been doing something illegal. Even with all the credentials, he still was held. And you know what, I'm like, I have to do my part even there and speak up for justice there. On my job, I got to speak up for justice because there's a lot of kids looking up to me. And you know what? They need to see that there's a black man that can do it the right way. And that there are others of minorities that can do it the right way. We're all not painted by the brush of what the media says or what a few might do. We're a great tapestry coming together to make this masterful artistry piece. And you know what? We all have to do our part. And it means lifting our voices. Like the great men of old had said, 
Yeah, again, I'm not saying we all have to be on the front line. We all have a part to play. And I just want to encourage you, will you play your part? Search your heart. You don't have to do this because I'm telling you. I'm just asking you, could you find your part in history and play it well? For the lives of those to come, can we set the stage and say, this is what life is going to be for them? You know, i got two daughters now, and I know they're going to grow up. And, you know, we already had COVID-19 and the pandemic there, and then there's prejudice and racism and injustice still going on and I'm like God what kind of world are they going to grow up in if I'm blessed to have a son God what will that world look like for that young man I don't know but I'm going to do my part to prepare them to live in whatever world that is so that they can be peacefully loving supportive but that they can let their voice be heard and they will stand and be leaders in their generation. Remember, I was a youth pastor, a youth minister, a youth leader, whatever you want to call it. My heart beat for the next generation because I wanted them to be better than me. I wanted them to overcome their obstacles and that's why I poured my heart out. And that's why I'm in education because I want the next group to have it better than me. I don't want them to look down and say, oh, it was good for Mr. Ramsey. He made it out, but I can't. Or it was good for my teacher or it was good for my parents. I want them to rise up and say, you know what? We can make a difference. And we had people that pointed us in the right direction. You know, and that starts in our jobs. That starts in our homes. It also starts with faith. And again, like I said, I'm a strong believer in the God I serve. And he saved me when I was a young child. He raised me. And a lot of people say, you make the right decisions. You know when to be quiet. Stuff comes and it doesn't bother you. Or, how are you, or you're in a position and other people are. And I'm like, it's because not of me, not of my power, but the God that lives inside of me. You know, I could have lost my cool. I could have went off crazy. I could have let my frustrations fly. But I allow God to keep me calm. Because that's what a leader needs to be leader of my house. I need to be calm. I need to be focused. I need to have my head on straight as a leader of a school. I need to be calm. I need to be focused. I need to get my head on straight. And I just said, I'm grateful that God is allowing, allowing me to be in these positions, but I'm more grateful that he's leading me, that he's guiding me, that he's protecting me. And you know what? I want to pray for those that are on the streets, that are on the front lines, they're doing everything right and they're still encouraged, they're encountering violence and anger and rage and injustice. God, I said right now, give us wisdom in this time. We don't understand what's going on. And I'm not even saying that you're causing all these things, but God, as we move, would you give us wisdom to move with direction and instruction? Give us the words to say, so when we speak, it'll be clear and it will be heard. I pray that the ears of this country and this nation will be open so they can hear the truth and that truth would set them free. And God, God, let love be our language. Let love be the motivator. Let love be the thing that binds and brings us back together. Strife, anger, rage, it's tearing us apart. Injustice is tearing us apart. God, let love start to rally us together against the hate. Let love be the fire that continues to burn and move us in the right direction. God, let your love shine bright in this hour. Deliver us from the mess. Deliver us, God, from the pain. Comfort us in our grief. Be patient with us in our frustration. God, continue to let us look to the hills to see the light and to move forward with purpose in every step. Thank you for listening. I just needed to clear my head, get it off my heart. Pray for all of you guys regularly on both sides because this hurt all around. But let us all do our part. Let our voices rise and let us come together. God bless.